I hope so too. Actually, so far has been really good. Hey guys, welcome back to Doki Doki Blue Skies. We're gonna be continuing with Yuri today, so let's see what's going on. It's the day of the festival. I just just now realized that the preparations for the event should be nearly complete, given all the work everyone's put in over the weekend. The banner Yuri and I painted is dry, and I gently rolled it up to take it with me. They sent me a pleasant test, reminding me not to forget anything. She did, and I reassured her. I smiled, putting my phone away. Her personality even shows through her texts. Funnily enough, I probably feel the same way as Natsuki about the event. I'm more excited for it to be over so I can spend time with Yuri at the festival. Maybe that's what Natsuki wants too. Maybe she wants to spend time with Yuri. I've seen some of that fan art. But knowing Monica, I'm sure the event will be great too. It's been a while though. Where's Sayori? Oh shite. I forgot what day it is. We've meant to walk together, but she's late again. I don't want to leave her behind, but if she takes much longer, I'm going to be late for school. Don't leave her hanging today. <laughs> don't leave her hanging, Salty, please. More time passes. There's going to be a moment of decision soon if she doesn't arrive. Just as I'm getting ready to leave, I finally spot her, slowly making her way down the street. She's carrying a large sack in her hand, and I'm surprised she isn't running over to me. Isn't she aware of how late she is? Sayori, where have you been? We could have been late for school. Ah, uh, I know. Sorry. I, uh, overslept again. Or couldn't decide what to have for breakfast again. She immediately pouts. You're such a meanie sometimes. Ah, uh, you know I'm teasing. It's all in good fun, right? She mumbles something under her breath. Go die in a fire, you motherfucker. Of course. It looks like she's back to her normal self. A definite relief. And not hanging. That's great. I felt a little guilty at not spending Sunday with her. But then again, it was probably wise to give her space. Then again, Yuri also needed help. I pointed to the sack she's carrying, which contains an assortment of colorful little gift bags. And are those the gift bags you were working on over the weekend? No, Salty. She just likes to make this shit for no reason. Yep, I managed to get everything we need. Candy, quotes, and bookmarks. It was a lot of fun. Although it's kind of hard to stop myself from eating the sweets. And did you manage it? <laughs> People won't notice if a sweet or two goes missing, right? I can't help but laugh. That's such a Sayori thing to say and do. Aww. Ah, ah, ah. I'm glad you're feeling better today, Sayori. I'm sorry I was a bit too invasive on Friday. I just worry a lot. That's all. It's okay, Salty. It really is sweet that you were concerned. But yeah, I'm fine. I was just a little rain. It was just a little rain cloud. <laughs> oh my god, your last rain cloud was pretty bad. Although, I'm kind of nervous for the festival. Honestly, I don't blame you for that. It's kind of nerve-wracking, isn't it? I mean, I know how much it means to Monica, but at the same time, I didn't really realize how intimate, intimidating... I didn't realize how intimidating reciting poetry to a bunch of strangers can be. Yeah, I was all for it back in the club room, but now that the actual day is here, I want to hang myself. <laughs> she looks a little nervous. I reached over and gave her a squeeze on the shoulder. We'll be fine. Don't worry. Don't you be juggling two chicks. I know how much you like poetry. Plus, your poems are great. I just hope my, per my performance is up to standard. Oh, don't be silly, Salty. I love your poem. I just know it. I chuckle, admiring the definite optimism that really makes Sayori well. Sayori. I guess we'll find out. <laughs> By the way, are you going doing anything after the festival? Don't you juggle two chicks, dude. Anything fun? Nope. I haven't really planned that far ahead. I'm not great at doing th that. <laughs> I'm kind of hoping we finish early so we can have the rest of the day off, to be honest. So what you're really saying is that you want to go home and sleep, right? Oh, look how many students there are. How many clubs are having their own little event today? She dodged it. What a, what a tactical change of topic that was. Our school is in sight, and there's a lot of students milling around. Milling around. It's a little strange to think that there's so many fellow students around, yet I've still been feeling so lonely. Oh, at least before joining the literature club. Times like these make me grateful that Sayori told me about it in the 
told me about the club in the first place. I don't know. Probably. Wait. What? 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 What did, what did I miss? Oh yeah, it says times like these make me grateful. And then it's like, I don't know, probably quite a few. Like, what's he answering? By the way, Sayori. Huh? What's up, Salty? I just want to say, uh, well, no matter, no matter how the festival goes, I'm really grateful you told me about the club and let me, and let me join. I've had a lot of fun so far. So what it was was the scene changed, but they were still talking as if they were still on the street, which is kind of weird. I scratch the back of my head nervously as Sayori looks curiously at me. I've never been good at expressing myself, and it probably shows. Guess what I'm trying to say is, uh, thank you. It's been so fun being able to spend time with you again. It really takes me back. You don't have to thank me for anything, silly. I've enjoyed it too. After all, it'd be lovely if things could go back to how they used to be. How they used to. What do you mean? Oh, nothing. <laughs> Strange choice of words. What sh could she have meant by that? She wants to go back to when you guys were friends and lovey-dovey. I mean, I, I assume you were kind of lovey-dovey. She wanted to be lovey-dovey, for sure. And we enter the courtyard and make our way to our meeting room. She breaks the silence by giggling. Something funny? <laughs> I just thought of a way to steal one of Natsuki's cupcakes without her realizing. Are you sure that's a good idea? Natsuki might be a little... Might be a little, but, you know... Better than I do, that she could be really fiery. Oh, don't worry about her. She might seem a bit mean on the outside, but she's harmless. Don't let her fool you. You are literally stealing cupcakes from someone who's poor and can't afford them and is starving. So I would not do that. Why is there like a pink dot in your eye? I never, I, I, I never realized that before. Okay. Well, I'd rather her than me. Salty, Sayori. It's good to see you guys. Oh, I thought she was being like, oh god, we're gonna die. Do you want to come and give me a hand? Monica is placing little booklets on each other's desk in the classroom. They must be the ones she prepared that, as all the poems were performing. In the end, I found a random poem online that I thought Monica would like and submitted it. So that's the one I'll be performing. Oh, I love the new uh, song. It's uh, your reality or... Hey, do you guys want to check out the pamphlets? They came out really nice. Yeah, sure. I put down the banners I'm holding to grab one of the pamphlets laid out on the desk. Oh yeah, they did really... Oh yeah, they really did. Oh, they look so pretty! Something like this will definitely help people take the club more seriously. Yeah, I think so too. I flip through the pages. Each member's poem is nearly printed on its own page, giving it an almost professional feel. I recognized the girl's poems from the one they performed during our practice. Just then, Natsuki burst into the room, carrying a box that positively towers over her. Yuri trails it in behind her, clutching at a large duffel bag nervously. All right, it's all right, it's festival time! Wow, you guys got here before me. I thought it was pretty early. Uh, I'm so oh, I'm sorry for being the last one here. I'm glad that some preparations is already underway, though. It should take less time to set everything up this way. Yeah, let's work too hard together, everyone. Natsuki unpacked her box to reveal four trays of cupcakes stacked carefully on top of each other. Salty! I jumped at the sun outburst. Yeah? Help me lay out these cupcakes. Uh, then if you wouldn't mind. Sorry, or can you help me out with, help me with these? Yuri gestures at her bag to which Sayori nods cheerfully. I help Natsuki with her cupcakes while Yuri and Sayori starts putting up decorations. I hope this sudden change with having to work with Natsuki doesn't reflect negatively because she hates us. Meanwhile, Monica continues putting down pamphlets. It isn't long before Natsuki has carefully arranged her cupcakes in a neat formation. Each cupcake is topped with white icing and some kanji written in a variety of different colored frostings. Wow, these look really good! Great idea to make them literature club themed as well, Natsuki. Yeah, it was a good idea. I wrote down words that specifically had to do with poetry in our poems, too. She picked up a cupcake to show me. See, this one says create. Er, isn't that the kanji for use? Eh? And Natsuki fiercely checks over the rest of her cupcakes to look for some miswritten characters. I glanced over at Sayori and Yuri. Uh-oh, she miswrote the thingies. Yuri's on the floor, painting her inspirational quote on the banner in white paint. 
I guess she figured out where I, where I put the pan- ah, I guess she figured out where I put the banner herself. Meanwhile, Sayori hung up the kanji curtains in the doorway and is puzzling over the essential oils set up. A good writer possessed not a good writer possesses not only his own spirit, but also the spirit of his friends. <gasps> yes, it's a quote by the German philosopher Friedrich Nietzsche. Seems like a pretty fitting quote. So, like the psychological guy, I, I know of Nietzsche. Isn't he the guy who said, "If you look at the void, the void looks back"? Yeah. Yes, I thought it would, would summarize our experience at the club quite well. I finished with the lettering, so it wouldn't you. I finished with the lettering, so if you wouldn't mind, Salty. Uh, this, that is, could you help me hold my chair steady as I pin this up? Of course. Yuri pulls a chair up the front of the classroom and climbs onto it, teetering slightly. She grips the ban banner tightly in her hand as she reaches up to attach it to the wall. The chair gives a threatening wobble, but luckily I managed to steady it. Oh, it's okay, Yuri. I got you. Oh, you go catch her. You don't have to. You don't have to worry. You don't have to worry about anything. Thank you. Is it just me, or does she look like she's starting to blush now? I feel my cheeks beginning to heat up as well. Uh oh. I didn't say anything weird, did I? When I helped her down from the chair, after she finished, she looked more bashful than ever. Man, how do I always make these things so awkward? It looks like all the preparation almost finished now. It feels like there's something missing, though. Suddenly, I notice a large bag sitting forlornly by itself to the side. That's Sayori's, isn't it? Sayori, did you forget to set up your part? Ah, ah, did I, did I? She rushes over the bag and quickly gives these out. It's full of small, colorful bags tied shut, it, shut with thin ribbons. Oh, wow! Don't worry, I'll help you. We start organizing the goodie bags in neat rows of the desk closest to the door. I pick inside one of them as, as we, do, we do so. You can take a bag if you want. Inside the bag, I find candy, stickers, inspirational quotes from poems, and some sort of cardstock and bookmarks. Looks like there's a good mix of things here. I chose only the best candy for the festival. And the best quotes. The best bookmarks as well. You betcha. We laugh as we finish our task. I take a bag, fish out a candy, and pop it into my mouth. Sorry, it really does have a good taste. The chocolate and toffee seems to melt in my tongue. Can I have one too, Salty? I can't resist those puppy dog eyes. Thanks, you're the best. Yippee! We actually get to experience the club, the the festival. We didn't get this far in the last games. <sighs> By the time we finish, it looks like everyone else is done too. The classroom is now darkened and lit up by the ambient light of the candles. A delicate floral scent wafers through the air, courtesy of Yuri's essential oils. Sayori and I head towards the other three girls who have hurtled that near the front of the classroom, murmuring to each other. Is it about time to start yet? Almost. We thought that we were going to start at 10 a.m. on our poster, and that's in 10 minutes. They better get here then. Are people actually going to show up for this? Don't be so negative. Some people have shown up already, and I'm sure they more will file in soon. You guys don't have to worry so much about it. I got full faith in all of you. Aw, thank you, Monica. That's so kind of you. All right now, I'm cleaning out my glasses. Okay. I've seen all your poems. It's been amazing watching each and every one of you find and nurture your unique writing styles. She smiles, encouraging at each other. Each of us. To her credit, her words are helpful, even though I haven't been part of this club for as long as the other three. Even salty. E uh, even salty? Not Suki. It was just a joke. Jeez. I thought some humor would lighten the mood. Ah, uh, sorry. Just trying to make sure everyone is in the best frame of mind before we start. It's okay, Monica. It's okay, Monica. We all understand and appreciate that. Yeah, we know, we know how much this club means to you. I want it to be a success just as much as you do. Yay, let's put our hands together, gang. Couldn't have put it better myself. Even though I've only been in the club for a few days, I felt really at home. Truth be told, I used to be kind of lonely. Aww. Knowing that I'm included is something with included in something with people like you guys always makes me feel better. 
I haven't told anyone about how lonely I've been feeling. I'm a little nervous about how they'll react. They all turn to me, varying degrees of emotions on their faces. Natsuki impassively looks to the side while Sayori and Yuri give me expressions of concern. Aw, Salty, I had no idea that you felt that way. I'm sorry. I really hope we can change that. But I'm so happy you feel welcome here. It's exactly what we wanted. I agree. No one should feel alone. I know it's quite a difficult thing to experience. I feel a warm flush of gratitude at their words. Thanks, guys. That means a lot. Also, Monica, I told Sayori this earlier, and I figured you might appreciate hearing this. Hmm? Well, no matter how, no matter how the festival goes, I just want to say thank you to all of you. Thanks to you guys, that lonely feeling has disappeared. We've all been so welcoming and accepting, and believe me, I'm really appreciative of that. So even if this visit event doesn't quite go as planned, I just know that I really love it here. I'm so glad Sayori told me about this club. If others don't like that we have sorry. If others don't like what we have here, well it's their loss, right? The girls nod in agreement, smiling at me. I had no idea my words would have such an impact, but I'm glad they did in the end. Aww. So cute. I feel so rewarded to be able to give back to the club for a change. Monica turns to me, eyes shining with appreciation. Thank you, Salty. You're right. Hearing those words from a newcomer really makes me feel like I've succeeded in my goals as president. I don't have to delete all of you. <laughs> After all, I wanted to create a place where people could feel comfortable and share literature. And what, just, and what you've just said makes me feel like it was all worth it. She turns to face the other. See, guys? If we could show Salty how amazing this club is, who's to say we can't show the other students the same thing? Don't see, don't see them as strangers, see them as potential club members. She's definitely got an inspiring way with the words. Yeah, good thinking, Monica. What's the worst that could happen? Yeah, yeah, but if they say anything bad about my cupcakes, I'm gonna kill them. Yuri giggles softly. <laughs> That's Yuri's laugh, by the way. I won't lie to you. I'm still quite nervous, but after hearing what you said, Salty, I realize that there might be other lonely people out there. This club would be the perfect place for them. Yeah, we might even find more manga enthusiasts. That's the spirit. Now let's go and show the rest of the school just what the literature club is made of. As if our cue, a few people wander the class in the room, curiously looking around the room. Monica confidently walks over and greets them. And so it begins. Monica and Sayori have greeted the newcomers. Oh, oh, oh scratch it. Have greeted the newcomers and settled them into the desk throughout the room, classroom. Some people are already helping themselves to Cupcake, and I notice Natsuki keeping an eye on them. Meanwhile, Yuri is nervously looking through a pamphlet. I can see her soundlessly mouthing the words to her poem. Now that I think about it, I should be getting some extra practice in as well. Before I could do so, though, Monica's head back, heads back towards us with Sayori in tow. Showtime, everyone! Let's do this, guys! Time to get this over with. I can do this. We group up and stand together at the front of the classroom. Monica steps up at the podium and clears her throat, drawing the room's attention to her. Okay, everyone. Welcome to the Literature Club's poetry performance. My name is Monica, as some of you may know. Some girls sitting near the front of the classroom rave at her. She has friends. And I'm the president of the club. According to me, is accompanying me is the vice president, Sayori. Hi, guys. And the rest of our club members, Yuri, Natsuki, and last but certainly not least, Salty. We all wave back at the students with varying degrees of enthusiasm. I hope that you all enjoy our poetry and that we'll be able to help contribute to a memorable, memorable festival. Literature is amazing and an ability to connect us to the human condition, and we really hope that the event will help encourage others to start participating as well. Our club will gradually welcome any new members from those who love words and writing as well to anyone who's simply just curious and wants to learn more. After the scheduled performance, we'll be opening up the stage for anyone else who wants to perform, so don't be shy. And now without further ado, I'll be st starting with my poem, The Way They Fly. Sayori, Natsuki, Yuri, and I head off to settle down in the foremost desk, saving the seat at the end for Monica. She stands there alone, yet still radiant radiating confidence. After flashing a smile and a wink at us, she begins. Each word is crystal clear and exudes emotion. Somehow, re her rec recitation is even better than it was only a few days ago. She must have practiced hard to try to achieve perfection. 
The classroom is silent at first, drinking in her words. After a few moments, however, some whispering starts up in the back of the classroom. You assholes, you be quiet. I guess that's the inevitable, but it still doesn't make it any less annoying. I exchange a look with Natsuki, who rolls her eyes at the disruption. Sayori pats my hand and gives me an encouraging smile. She's comforting as always. She's like, a mommy, Sayori. As Monica's poem progresses, more and more people wander in. Normally that would be a good thing, but they're making a lot of noise. Thankfully, they simmer down once they realize Monica's speaking, but the damage has already been done. She reaches the end of her poem, the last few words resonating in the classroom. A round of applause for the room, and Monica be beams at everyone, patiently waiting for them to finish. Thank you for listening, everyone. I hope you enjoy my poem, and that is giving you a flavor of what the club is like. For the newcomers, welcome. We're just in the midst of showing you all our poems. For the benefit of those who have just joined, she quickly reintroduces herself. Anyway, up next is Natsuki. Take it away. Okay, at least she's number two. She she should be at least before me. She hated this idea. Let me take a sip. Cause my throat's already starting. Gotta go. Okay. Today's flavor is black cherry, and it's delicious. Natsuki stumbles slightly as she makes her way to the front of the class. I guess the nerves are really getting to her. It doesn't help that someone snickers, causing her to, to turn to glare at them. She'll bite your freaking head off. Sayori, Sayori seems to notice too, as she hastens to shoot Natsuki a reassuring smile. Natsuki stands at the front of the classroom with her poem in hand. Slight traces of irritation are still visible on her face. Anyway, so my poem's called Jump. She takes a deep breath and be begins her recital. <sighs> Just as I was hoping, she's able to interject her trademark bouncy style into the performance, bringing the words to life. She doesn't quite radiate the confidence Monica did, but her unique style shines through, giving the poem a flow and rhythm. While simply, while simple, it's effective. My heart sinks as I start picking up on the newcomers having their own conversation in the back of the room. I'm hit with a sur with a surge of inner anger. How can they be so inconsiderate? It it's clear that they aren't paying any attention, and from the pause and change in Natsuki's tone, she's clearly picked up on that as well. Why can't they just save their stupid, selfish conversation for an an after our performance? Her poem comes to an end, but unlike with Monica, there's a slight awkward moment of silence. Once again, there's a round of applause, but it's clear that the audience engagement isn't quite as strong. Great performance, Natsuki. I really like the rhythm of that poem. Natsuki forces a smile and makes her way back to her seat. It's clear that she's upset. Oh, man. Anyway, our vice president, Sayori, is next to perform. Hi, everyone. I hope you like my poem. <laughs> she cheerily skips up to the front, poem in hand. As she turns to face us, she looks a little nervous, fidgeting slightly. <laughs> Sorry, I'm a little nervous. It's okay, Sayori. Just remember what we practice. I got full faith in you. Yeah, you got this. This one's called My Meadow. She begins her poems. Her soft voice guides through the recital, and there's a remarkable contrast between her cheerful infl inflection and the more bittersweet nature of the words. At the corner of my eyes, I notice people casually flickering cupcake wrappers onto the floor, along with candy wrappers lying on the tables. Those are the worst assholes. We're still... The talking is getting louder and more noticeable. Monica looks around at the perpetrators, frowning at them. I wish Monica could delete them. She's like, Control Alt Delete! Boom, they're dead. One of the students lets out a loud yawn, <sighs> making absolutely no effort to hide it. Ah, I actually made myself yawn. Another student picks up on the quotes and nudges their friend. They both frown and laugh at the message, and I get the horrible feeling it's more than the mocking kind of laugh. At this point, I'm seeing red. If we weren't in school, I would have punched those inconsiderate pricks by now. No one should be this rude as Sayori. She's probably the sweetest person I've ever met. Despite the now obvious disruption, she's still trying her best, and it makes a real effort to continue. To her credit, her performance is still commendable. She managed to work the contrast of an inunatuation against the words in her favor. It adds an interesting depth to the poem. I'd love to see more of this side to her. She brings her performance to a close, hands shaking slightly. 
Lovely poem, Sayori. You already brought that one to life. Thank you. Something's off with her voice. It's like she was on Friday. Oh no, it slipped her back into her depressed state. Monica stands up, turning to address everyone in the room. Just a polite reminder that it would be much appreciated if everyone could give our poems poets some respect while they're performing. Monica looks stern while Natsuki looks positively furious. Thank you. Now the stage is all yours, Yuri. Yuri is looking terrified at this point. Sayori gives her a reassuring squeeze and I lean over, whispering into her ear. You've got this, Yuri. Just pretend like it's only me, Natsuki, Sayori, and Monica. Uh, I, I can't do this, Salty. Yes, you can. I believe in you. I see how passionate you can be when you talk about Portrait of Markov. I love that. I love seeing that side of you. Besides, like you said, this club could be a perfect place for any of these people. We just don't know it yet. She swallows nervously, nodding at my words. Okay, thank you. She rises to her feet, poem clasped firmly at her chest, and avoids eye contact with everyone as she walks up. Her eyes flicker up to the glance of the classroom where she gets on stage, although she quickly ducks her head down to look at the poem on the podium. Th this poem is titled, After Image of a Crimson Eye. Her voice quivers as she starts, but unlike her rec recitation a few days ago, the meek and trembling version of Yuri remains well into the poem. Uh -oh. She determinedly forges ahead, but I can tell that she's not enjoying it in the slightest. The last of the classroom, momentarily subdued by Monica's words, soon to begin to grow louder again. After a few lines of the poem, they are even more unruly than before. The clinking of rappers filled the air, and at a few points, Yuri is almost drowned out by the other voices. I catch a few people getting up and leaving the classroom, and by the slight hick hitch in her voice, it seems that Yuri seems this as well. Ah, oh. come on. My, okay. Her eyes start glue stared glued to her poems now, and it looks like she's trying her hardest to ignore everyone. One boy quietly wolf whistles at Yuri, causing her to jump and lower her head even more. She practically shaking like a leaf. This is absolutely disgusting behavior, and I open mouth to say something. Suddenly, Natsuki stands up, a loud screeping noise from her pushing away from the desk draws the attention of the students. Can you all just shut up? I'm really freaking sick of this. How can you guys be so rude? We're trying our best to show you something amazing here, and you're just going to stump all over our hard work like that? Unbelievable. Can't even understand how people can be this arrogant. Ugh, just the pain, plain terrible. Uh, what? Uh, yeah. Ugh, just this plain, this plain terrible. Just this plain terrible, okay. I didn't want to interrupt you, Yuri, but I can't stand it anymore. You just might as well leave if you aren't even going to pretend to pay attention. There's complete silence for a beat. Well, he's an asshole. You can tell that. Uh, what's, what would be his voice? How oh, they came for the food anyway. Let's go, guys. Once this boy speaks up and gets to lead his friends away, one by one, more students start to follow them out of the door. I throw a panic look at it over to Monica, who's holding a strange, stiff expression on her face. Looks like she's struggling to stay calm for everyone. After a few moments, there's barely anyone left. Yuri, meanwhile, quickly begins speaking again, but her voice is barely audible. There's just a stifling silence accompanying her words. When she finishes, a weak smattering of applause sound from the few who are left. She unsteadily steps down from the stage, a blank look on her face. She won't look at any of us either. I'm worried about her. Okay! Monica's voice cracks as she speaks up, still trying her best to see, through, uh, uh, see us through this. I don't think any of us could have predicted that it would turn out this way. Damn, that's horrible. Maybe, maybe we all should have just died. Maybe it would have been better off. Ahem. Thank you, Yuri. You did wonderful. I'm so for, uh, sorry for all the disruptions and sheer arrogance you had to endure. These kinds of people really are the worst. To those who are left, I want to thank you all for staying and apologize as well. This is definitely not a normal occurrence at the Literature Club, I assure you. Well, let's finish this off with Salty then. Oh, uh, I have to go and have mine. Oh, I hope Salty snaps and just starts killing the people. Takes a desk and just slams them into it. Oh, WWE style. 
With a heavy heart, I slowly get up and walk over to the stage. When I get to the podium, I applaud by the side of the classroom. Candy and cup, cup, cupcake wrappers are strewed across the floor, and quote cards lay tossed about, with many of the cards now featuring shoe prints over the words. The remnants of goodie bags are left ripped apart on desks. Even the kanji curtains look tangled up and messy. The only students left are the ones who waved to Monica at the beginning. This is what Yuri had to see when reciting her poem. No wonder she didn't want to look up at, at, at face these people. Can I really do this now? How were the others able to finish their poems? I look at the clock. Only 10.20. Has it really only been 20 minutes? Taking a shitty, shaky, <laughs> taking a shaky breath, I begin to speak. Hi, everyone. I'd like to take a second to apologize as well, both to these checking, up, both to those checking out the club today, and to those who are already in it. But despite everything that's happened, I can say that I'm glad I joined, since I got to meet so many amazing people. I believe that you guys will love it as much as I did too. Anyway, I hope that you all enjoy "Acquainted with the Night." Oh, we got to hear what his the title of his poem was. I start reading, and am struck once again by the beauty of the poem. The loneliness and isolation conveyed so accurately. I wonder if that's a real poem. I need to look it up. I can relate to the, a lot of these feelings. I won't be as good as the others at reciting, but I can only hope that I'll be able to do the poem justice. Thoughts of doing both the poet and the club proud strengthened my spirit, and I managed to fight through the depressing mood. The quiet of the classroom suits the, suits the lines of the poem well, and my recital seems to fly by rather quickly. Excellent performance, Salty. What a great way to round off the event. As I step down from the stage, Monica stands up and addresses the room. Thank you all for coming and staying. I truly appreciate it from the bottom of my heart. That's it for the scheduled rec recitation, but you guys are free to stay and hang out if you want. There's an awkward silence for a few moments, then remaining students start to stand up. <sighs> oh, wow, I don't know what her voice would be. Hey, Monica. Oh, and you too, Salty. Did we... Did we meet her already? I didn't know you were in this club. The girl standing before us is actually my homeroom class representative, Shiori. Shiori. Given that both she and Monica are class reps, they're probably friends. Yeah, I only joined about a week ago, so... Oh, I see, I see. Yep. Hey, the way you guys were treated was seriously awful. I'm fine. Thanks for staying. Either way, sorry about everything, Monica. I'll check out the club sometime. Hey, we might have a new member. She gives us a small commission. She gives us a small commissary smile, and I'm torn between wondering whether everyone's pitting us or sympathizing with us. Probably both. They all start to file out of the classroom after a few more goodbyes. Monica keeps a strange smile plastered on her face. Meanwhile, Yuri has her head buried in her arms and on the desk. I contract Natsuki and start. I contrast Natsuki and star staring straight ahead, grinding her teeth. And Sayori looks down at her desk, picking out a spot in the varnished wood. Uh oh. Oh man. Well, just in case there's a upcoming decision. Okay. To say there's tension in the air would be a massive understatement. There's silence in the room made worse by the sense of awkwardness. No one knows what to say. No one expect, expected the festival to end this way, and the impact is hitting us all. But, I mean, it looks like you had a whole full house, though. You had all kinds of junk and stuff. So that could have gone better. My attempt at humor falls flat, and I immediately regret speaking. Natsuki gives me a dirty look, but Sayori smiles wanly. Meanwhile, it looks like Monica's face has finally fallen. I don't understand. Where do we go so wrong, guys? We spent so long preparing for this, and after all our efforts. For the first time, the ongoing confidence Monica always seemed to radiate has stuffed out. She clearly cared a lot about this event. I feel awful for her. I know. I don't get it either. I thought you guys all did such a good job as well. Decorations, the recitals. I'm sorry, Monica. Uh, don't worry about it, Salty. It's not like it's your fault, anyway. She smiles wickedly at me, glancing around. I notice that Yuri and Natsuki seem particularly upset, with Yuri looking absolutely dejected. 
and Natsuki steaming mad. Oh, don't you go. Don't you dare. Don't you dare put this on her. This is your fault, Monica. I told you this was a stupid idea. Nest of it even comfortable with doing it in the first place. Now look where it's landed us. Excuse me? My fault? You all agreed to do this. Pardon me for thinking it would actually go well. What's so wrong about that? We well, only agreed to do it because we felt like you were forcing us. I was really hoping that this wouldn't happen. Given everyone's low mood, an argument is the last thing we need. Yep, that's why I saved. I didn't force anyone, Natsuki. You know how much this club means to me. I was just excited to show what we have the rest of the school. Yeah, because that was such a good idea, wasn't it? I'm really starting to get sick of your contests. Constant sarcasm. You know, why can't you just try to be positive for once in your frickin' life? Gee, it's funny you should say that because I'm really starting to get sick of your self-righteous know-it-all attitude. We told you this was a bad idea, but no! You just had to insist on this, even though no one was happy with it. It was for a reason. Look at how much Salty enjoyed it here. It's really so unreasonable to think that we could found someone else like him. Or is it that just too positive for you to even fathom? This is awful. The other students were bad enough, but now Monica and Natsuki are going for each other's throats. Damn! I did not expect this, actually. Look how badly everything everyone's humiliated. How inconsiderate all of those those She struggles for a moment, her anger inhibiting her ability to speak. Those assholes were tall of us! They didn't give a damn about anything we had to say. What did that one prick say? He was only here for the food. All of that hard work just for that. What? Nothing. She angrily kicks one of the desk. The loud noise jolts, jolts Yuri. Who looks up with tears in her eyes. Aww. Please, Natsuki, can you calm down? Don't tell me you're taking her side, Yuri. Yet experience the worst of it. I don't get why you're not mad either. Natsuki, there's no point in being angry at Monica. She didn't want this to happen. She had no idea people would react this way. That's bad enough that the students were rude. And I really don't like fighting inside the club itself. Yeah, yeah, but if Monica just listened to us when we said we were comfortable with the whole idea, this would have never have happened. Monica sighs. This is the kind of conflict she gently, generally leaves for Sayori to deal with. But in this case, Sayori looks too distraught to intervene. Look, what you're not understanding is that sometimes you just have to take risks. Sure, this didn't go so well, but there's always a chance it wouldn't have ended like this, and we could have had new members. She turns to me. I mean, you of all people can understand that the best right salt- Best? Right, Salty? You made the choice to come here. Look how much you enjoyed it. Oh, don't you try and suck up to him, Monica. Face it, you never listen to us, your club members, or take our opinions into account. We might be seeing the death of the literature club. Tell me I'm not alone in thinking in thinking that, Salty. Oh, great. Now I have to choose a side. I really don't want to do this. I desperately look at Yuri and Sayori, but both look too upset to want to get involved. <sighs> I favor Monica. Like, honestly, even without the whole craziness, you know, looking at this as its own thing, she didn't know that it was going to end up like this. And in truth... It's kind of a success. They got out, you know, they showed what their club was about. Natsuki's kind of going over the top with it. You know, yeah, people were moved to her and her, her type A personality has taken over this situation. But, I mean, I feel like Monica has still not failed as a leader and she's actually done her job. So I think I will be favoring Monica on this and probably getting the worst ending of the game, so... Okay. <laughs> Monica. <sighs> We're already unpopular with Natsuki. That's the thing. Oh, oh God. What? How worse can... <sighs> I'm sorry, Natsuki. I am. Something tells me this is going to make me very unpopular with Natsuki. 
I brace myself for what's going to come next. Natsuki, come on! You know better than I do that Monica loves this club. It's only natural she'd want to share with the rest of the school. Ah, uh, seriously? You're actually taking her aside? I can't believe this! No, it's not like that. I'm not taking her aside. It's just... Just what? That exactly what are you trying to do, Salty? Don't try and backpedal. Natsuki, that's not what he's trying to say. He's just... Oh, of course you're jumping to his aid. Shut up, Monica. Monica looks furious, and for a moment I think Natsuki has finally gone too far. Control all the lite! <laughs> she closes her eyes and takes a deep breath, evidently trying to contain her anger. Jeez, Natsuki, don't you think this was a little out of order? You didn't have to sh shout at her. What would you know? You haven't even been here for five days. Why is everyone making me out to be the bad guy here? Remember when Monica said that she'd make sure people weren't going to be rude during our performance? Wow, congratulations. Sure did a fantastic job with that. I mean, it's not like any, another, anyone wolf whistled at Yuri or anything. Some enforcer you were. Her bitter, sarcastic tirade continues on, each point worsening the atmosphere. I'm the only one who can see that this is what it is. It's just Monica's trying to use the club to boost her popularity. And it seconds me. You think we're all just, what, some sort of pawns for you? Explain why did you, you didn't even consider how reluctant we all were to do this, or why you let everyone just walk all over us. Natsuki, you're just being ridiculous now. Why would I want to hurt all of this? I'm not exactly being easy on me either. It's not exactly been easy on me either. <sighs> Natsuki lets out a snort of derision. derision. You? What would you of all people know about life being hard? Atsuki blinks. Monica blinks, sorry. Looks like she's been slapped. It's easy for you, Monica, with your role as the queen of the school. Everyone likes you, all that crap. You have such a perfect life and all. Never having to defend yourself. Never having to defend your interest. Never have anyone ridicule you for the things you like. I share classes with these assholes, you know. I share classes with those assholes, you know. And you can bet they're gonna have a lot of fun telling everyone about else about it. About how much of a loser we all are. Well, then we're part of the Losers Club. Let's go with that. And guess what? It's all because of you. I can practically hear the venom dripping from her words at this point. It's absolutely horrible. Face it! Seriori would be a better present than you could have ever be <sighs> wow and with that a sickening silence falls onto the room once more but this time it's a million times worse the fire in Natsuki's eyes is blazing and quiet sobs can be heard from Yuri Sayori is miserable hugging her miserably hugging herself looking completely lost for words Monica is wearing a stony expression on her face, looking both enraged and heartbroken. The whole club waits for a reply to the bombshell Natsuki just dropped on her. But without a word, Monica turns on her heel and walks out of the door, the impact of Natsuki's words hanging in the air behind her. No one knows what to say. For a few moments, the heavy silence remains. We all exchange looks. Yuri is me meekly wiping her eyes on her sleeve, and Sayori is standing around awkwardly. Natsuki, on the other hand, is refusing to meet anyone's gaze. She looks like she's regretting her words a little bit. Yeah, you should. Um, guys. Please, can we make sure that this never happens again? It was awful. It was horrible to experience, to say the least. Without Monica to restore order and keeping things going, the club suddenly feels very aimless and disorganized. Natsuki, I know you're angry, but can you please find Monica and apologize? But, please, I know you're feeling a bit guilty over what you said. After all, you were a bit mean. Natsuki grumbles something under her breath. Nah, it's okay. I'll go and find Monica. No offense, Natsuki, but I don't think she particularly wants to see you right now. I wince at the words. I wince as the words leave my mouth, 
It's probably a more diplomatic way of saying it. You're a bitch! Natsuki glares at me. Fine. As I turned to leave, I silently motioned to Yuri and Sayori to try and talk to Natsuki. Sayori nods, and Yuri nervously swallows. <sighs> wow, that was actually kind of fucking intense. <laughs> Damn. Yeah, like, I guess the biggest impact was, you know, when you play the game, like, you know, obviously this is a mod. This isn't the actual what Dan Salvato had in mind. But you always kind of wondered what the festival would have been like. I guess this is one interpretation, and it's not a very positive one. So, I don't know. Maybe I did something wrong, and this is a bad ending. Let's continue. Now where would Monica go? She would probably some what somewhere quiet where she could be by herself, right? Which rules out the classroom, the courtyard, and the cafeteria. The only two places come in mind are the girls' toilets, or probably the uh, piano the rooftop oh shite well i'm hoping it isn't the girls toilets i kind of hope it's not the rooftop either i make my way over to the staircase and lead and lead up to the top think about how the this conversation is going to go i quit <laughs> that, that's probably where it goes will she ever want to talk to me she didn't even say anything as she left. Was she that upset? Although, given what Natsuki said, I really wouldn't blame Monica. Guess there's only one way to find out. There's a door at the top of the stairs which opens down to the roof. Bracing myself, I put my hand on the cold, still door. Oh, don't you fucking do it. I push the door open. I thought it was dark out. I thought it was like 10 p.m. Man, the view up here. Oh, they got the fences. Okay. Man, the views up here really is something. I shiver as the wind cuts through my blazer. It's cold and desolate place. I fit it excited for what just happened. I look around and there she is. <sighs> Leaning slightly over the barricade at the edge of the rooftop. Face turned away from me. Not a peep sound from her. Not even when the wind slams the door behind me closed. Monica? No answer. I slowly approaching her, making a little noise as possible in some illogical attempt to not scare her away. You, uh, looked pretty upset, so I thought I'd come find you. I trail off, mentally berating myself as how weak that must have sounded. She stays completely still as I sidle up to her side, leaning on the railing so that I can see her face. I don't know what I expected, but her expression is oddly calm. Monica? Beautiful view, isn't it? Yeah, you could say that. Is that the reason you came up here? It's part of it. On days like this, the wind and the eternally stretching blue sky makes me feel like I could go anywhere. It feels freeing. There's something comforting in the possibility of getting swallowed up by that blue. Being able to stimulously Stimulatedly take control and lose control. Monica, are you? Well, I know that you're obviously not okay. But I'm not asking if you're okay to know if you're okay. I'm going to ask if you're okay so that you can choose to talk to me about whether, whatever, you, if you want to. To give you an opportunity to open up. So, are you okay? A thin smile appears on her face. Progress. That's sweet of you, Salty. To be honest, I didn't expect you to have any tact at all. Damn! Me neither. <laughs> Did you expect that I'd be crying up here? Contemplating suicide or something? <laughs> Me! <and> yeah. <laughs> Don't worry, I wouldn't do it just because of the festival. Thank you, God. <laughs> Thank you, visual novel God. Well, I wouldn't blame you if you wanted to cry it out. <laughs> you know, I actually thought I would cry at first. But maybe I'm all cried out. 
I guess I've come to terms with all the things that Netsuki said already. She says such weighted words so casually. What Natsuki said wasn't true, Monica. I think that you're a fantastic president. Ace to try to give less empty words after she arches an eyebrow at me. I'm not just saying that to cheer you up either. Remember what I said to you before the festival? During your little pep talk? She faintly nods. Well, I'm going to reiterate it anyway because it's important. You are of how much I mean it. I mean it. Thank you for everything. You took me in when I really needed it. Remember how I said earlier that I've been feeling lonely? She nods again. What's well, that's how things have been for me re recently. I haven't seen much of my parents lately, and most of my days I've spent alone. All of that changed when I joined your club. You were all so friendly and welcoming. Not once did you ever turn me away because I wasn't a poet. I mean, between you and me, I know my poems weren't the greatest. Hey, you have a lot of potential, Salty. I did like your poems. Well, I'm glad you think so. But anyway, that's beside the point. You accepted me for who I was and was always willing to help me. And more importantly, you've created something that three of us, three other girls hold dear to their hearts. Definitely the sign of a good president, if you ask me. Monica looks down for a moment, as if composing herself, and then meets me meets my eyes with a smile. Thank you, Salty. It really means a lot. Like I said earlier, hearing all this from a newcomer really does make me believe I've hit the goal I've set for myself. All I wanted was to create a little heaven that people could call home, no matter their writing ability. Well, take it from someone who joined only a few days ago, then. You definitely succeeded. Also, had you not made this club, I would never have gotten to meet Yuri and Natsuki, or been able to hang out with Sayori again. Nor would I have gotten to get to know you better, th better either. And that would have been a real shame. Can we switch to Team Monica now? I know I just got on to him for about playing two girls, but it's freaking Monica. I mean, <laughs> I playfully nudge her, receiving a nudge back. This past week has probably been the happiest I've ever been in a long, long time. And that is all thanks to you. Damn, laying on that thick. We share a smile, one that I'm not, I'm not sure is completely genuine on Monica's part. I don't really know what to say. It's okay, seriously. I just wanted to know you how you felt. Anyway, Natsuki was a bit out of order with her words, but honestly, I don't think she meant it. I guess tensions were just running real high. You know better than I do how fiery she can be. Yeah, I know she was just really upset. But hearing those words, it hit pretty deep, you know? I tried telling myself not to take her words to heart, because I knew she was just upset. But it was that line about not Sayori being a better president. I don't know why I got under my skin so much. It's just spite, Monica. People say awful things that they don't mean when they're upset. Sayori and Yuri are talking to her now. I get the feeling she wants to apologize, but just don't- but just doesn't know how to. <laughs> Well, that's definitely something Natsuki needs working on. By the way, thank you for making the effort to find me. It really means a lot. I'm suddenly struck by the situation I'm in. Here I am, alone, with one of the most attractive, popular girls of the year, having a heart-to-heart. -heart. <laughs> yeah, probably a situation most other guys in the school would kill to be in. My face heats up a little as I pro process the heartfelt, rather value vulnerable scene we're both in. Uh, you're welcome, Monica. Nothing to thank me for. I sheepishly scratched the back of my neck. We should go and find the others, though. Don't want them to worry or anything. Sorry, I lost my thought for a second. We stand up and make our way back to the door. 
I hope so. It wasn't exactly nice to be told you have the perfect life and that you've never experienced any difficulties. As we make our way back to the club, I just hope Sayori and Yuri were able to talk some sense into Natsuki. The last thing we need is another argument. She's silent as we wordlessly make our way back to the classroom. We finally arrive. I squeeze with her shoulder as she takes a deep breath and walks in. Damn, your girl so touchy. Wow, uh, where's Natsuki? Ah, uh, they're back! Oh, Yuri and Sayori hurry over to us, looking wordly at Monica. Meanwhile, Natsuki remains standing off to the side by herself, arms folded. Hey guys, I'm alright, really. Taking some time outside helped clear my head, and I'm feeling a lot better now. Not to mention, Salty was a real help too. I'm relieved. It was a frightening prospect to consider losing our club president. Yeah, and now that everyone's calmed down, we can talk things out. Natsuki, why don't you come join us? Ah, uh, fine. She drags her feet as she makes her way over to us. I notice Monica fidgeting with the hem of her skirt and smile reassuring to her. Okay, so I'm here. Natsuki's eyes dart up to meet Monica for just a second. So, um... It's an awkward silence as Natsuki's voice trails away. Sayori raises her eyebrow at her, causing the smaller girl to return with a glare. I think what Natsuki means to say is that she just said all those things in the heat of the moment. A crime of passion, as it were. Hey, jeez, I can speak for myself, okay? She says that, but... Alright, I'm just gonna get this over with. What I wanted to say was, I didn't mean what I said that you were a bad president. I mean, I guess it's pretty clear that you care a lot about this club. Sayori nods vigorously as her egg <laughs> egging her on. It's just that those jerk pissed me off so much that I blurted out random things and needed a vent. Well, I won't lie, it doesn't seem like you always get special treatment because you're so popular, Monica. But then again, I wouldn't know what you have to go through. You're on a total different level from the rest of us. Natsuki. Anyway, that's all I guess. Anyway, that's all I guess. I've always seen you as a friend, and I, I hope that you'll still be able to see me as one too. There's tension in the air once again as we anxiously wait for Monica's response. Now Shuki, Natsuki shifts back and forth on her feet, looking like she's almost wanting to run away from the scene. Thank you for saying that. I'm not going to lie either. I'm not going to lie either. Your comment doubted my presidency hurts it's definitely not true though you're a great president monica yeah you brought us all together without you we wouldn't have become friends and i wouldn't have been introduced to the world of poetry i agree it's an amazing feeling to be able to talk to like-minded individuals yeah as far as presidents go we could definitely go do worse and so what if you nudged us into the festival i guess it's only normal for presidents of the all of all people to want their club to grow <laughs> Thanks, guys. Salty kind of let it slip that he thought that Monica was uh, nudging. I didn't think she was nudging. I thought she was just doing a job. I guess that after all that, I have no choice but to accept Natsuki's apology, eh? I mean, it'd be really great if you could. That's certainly an understatement. Well, I'll turn to look at your surprise at the glimpse of a humorous side to her. Uh oh, did I say something strange? Oh, Yuri, you're so funny. Uh. I let out a breath, and I let out a breath I've been subconsciously holding. It seems like everyone's turned out well in the end, or at least as well as they can, given the circumstances. Okay, everyone. And with that catchphrase, everyone seems all right in the world once again. I totally forgot to mention this, but we still need to clean up everything. I'm sure that with all the us working together, though, it won't take that long to do. I'm assuming everyone's just going to skip the festival and go home after this. Hmm, I'm pretty tired after all that stuff that just happened. As am I. Same here. Uh, I wish I could leave too, but I have a shift in my classes. In my classes cafe after this. What's your classes cafe? It's all right though. Everyone get moving then, so we can get all all go home. Everyone starts cleaning up the room, my, myself included. 
Yuri and Natsuki start packing up the essential oils, setting up the and cupcake trays, respectively. Meanwhile, Sayori, Monica, and I pick up everything left on the grounds and desk. It's like we're erasing all traces that the festival even happened in here. Although, I can't help but think that there's still lingering tension in the air, despite Monica's cheery expression. I have a feeling that Monica might just be putting the club before herself in this case. But the only thing I can do now is hope that everyone will feel better tomorrow. I'd be pretty nice to get home from school earlier for a change, be able to relax. Although now that I think about it, I really only have anime and video games to look forward to. I guess that everything that happened today is going to be plaguing my mind tonight. Yay, it's the next night. I guess it'll be go daytime because we don't have a poetry to write. Morning already. So I gotta keep beeping. Okay. So, with that, I think that's gonna be it for right now. That was intense. I will not lie. That was actually pretty damn intense. <laughs> uh, I hope you all are enjoying this. Uh, I keep clicking the sensor duty button and it keeps unclicking itself. I think my, <laughs> my game is like perverted or something. Uh, either I'm gonna have to try to find a way to get it to censor, or I'm just gonna have to censor it and post. Hey, whatever. Anyway, hope you guys are enjoying this. I will see you in the next one. Like, favorite, and subscribe if you don't mind, and I'll see ya. Bye bye